So we, before the commercial break, we were discussing that since the COVID lockdown began, Lexi's mental health had deteriorated quite significantly. Um, Shauna, what steps were taken either by yourselves or by, by, by Lexi uh, to, to reach out for help? So in this, it all became very apparent uh, how serious this was in November when she attempted suicide. At that point, she went to the hospital and she was seen by a psychiatrist. She was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and was given a referral to mental health. At that point, we used um, our employer benefits and she went to go see a, a counselor, uh, several sessions with the counselor while we waited for that mental health referral. Um, she still became very close with one of the guidance counselors at school. So she did have that resource there to help get her through. And we just felt like we were using a Band-Aid to get her through till right. we got to the mental health uh, referral. Right. And what happened then? Because at some point the school, she was at school and she was having, uh, she was having concerns. And I think the guidance counselor assisted her in some capacity. Um, Chris, did you want to share? Yeah, so that day, the on the that Thursday when Lexi went to visit the hospital with the guidance counselor, like they called me from her office and uh, Lexi told me, she said, Dad, you know, I'm here with the guidance counselor and we're going to go over to the hospital. So whatever Lexi had told her in that meeting was uh, concerning enough that she, as the guidance counselor, needed to take her to the hospital right away and wanted to speak to the psychiatrist on staff. So they went to the hospital probably around 1230, uh, checked in, got triaged, and basically they sat in the waiting room till almost 730 that night before they got into the ER. And then they were seen by the ER doctor and, you know, were basically told, you know, well, there's nobody here now, but we can call somebody if you like. But, you know, they didn't really want to make that phone call. But what's concerning is the hospital here in Fredericton have a psychiatrist on duty through the day and a psych nurse that works through the day. So the first three or four hours that Lexi sat in the ER waiting room, the psychiatrist was on site. And basically the ER staff never picked up the phone to call him or page him to say, we have a psych consult here in the ER. So, you know, they sat there till basically the shift switched at probably like 7 or 7.30. And then I suspect that the nurse that came on for that night shift probably looked at her chart and said, oh, we have a site consult that's been sitting here for seven hours now. And then they brought them to the back of the ER. And, you know, that's when they kind of were basically, you know, right. not really helped, I guess. Now. One thing I read when I was reading reports of what happened is you were not allowed. Neither parent was allowed in to, to be with Lexi. I found that very alarming as a parent myself. Why not? Why weren't you allowed well, in? Well, with, with the COVID restrictions that the hospital has in place, they're only allowed, they were only allowing one adult where she was a minor. So where the guidance counselor was sitting with her, I went to the hospital probably around 5.30, 6 o'clock that night. And I sat with them in the ER waiting room for, you know, probably half an hour and talked to the guidance counselor and talked to Lexi. And at the time, uh, the guidance counselor was going to go home and have a bite to eat. And I said, uh, well, when they get Lexi into the ER, I will call you back so you can talk to the psychiatrist because she was adamant that she wanted to talk to the psychiatrist for Lexi. But the nurse came out and said, I'm sorry, you can't stay here. Only one of you can stay. So if the guidance counselor leaves, she's not going to be allowed to come back in. So I was more concerned for Lexi. So I basically said to the guidance counselor, then will you stay? Because I know you want to talk to the psychiatrist. And when you talk to him or her, then uh, call me and let me know what our next step is. And then, you know, probably... <laughs> About 10 to 9 that night, I got a call from Lexi and the guidance counselor and, you know, said we're all done. So I got there and met them outside in the parking lot. And that's when they told me that they never got to see a psychiatrist. And then what happened, Shauna? So Lexi went home with this referral for mental health. Um, and six days later, she took her own life. Um, we never did get the call from the mental health for that over the next six days. And uh, just 
feel like she really slipped through the cracks at her last call, last try to get some help. She was basically turned away. She was left that hospital that night feeling like a burden uh, that she had made, you know, oh, I made, made this guidance counselor sit here for eight hours for nothing. And Lexi never wanted to feel like a, a burden and she didn't want to put anybody out of their way. So that was really hard on her. And uh, it actually like made the situation even worse for her.